the start. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good to be at SoccerX. I hope everybody's had a good first day. Um, I can assure you this is not the graveyard slot. This is the headliner uh, for today. So, um, my name is Georgi. I'm a director at Red Lantern. And on today's panel, we'll be talking about how the Premier League is supporting football development reform in China through the Premier Skills program. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to introduce the panel um, from left to right. Uh, we have Kate Dowler, who is Head of International Relations at the Premier League. We have Mehdi Wong, who is Head of Schools and Football at the British Council in China. We have Angela Smith, who is International Project Manager and Community Ambassador at Stoke City FC. And finally, we have Kelvin Chi, who is a Premier Skills coach educator. Um, I guess um, first thing and the right thing to do will be let Kate explain um, fully exactly what the Premier Skills program is globally. Thank you very much. Hello everybody. Um, Premier Skills has been established for 11 years now. I've been very lucky to be involved from the start. It's a uh, global program uh, with the Premier League and the British Council which um, uses football to train uh, and inspire coaches and referees around the world. So we've trained over 20,000 coaches and referees now, delivered in 29 countries, and benefited over one and a half million young people. And really, we target individuals who have a huge reach in their communities already, so coaches, youth leaders, teachers, and give them the opportunity to take part in a three-phase program, which are week-long courses over a two-year period. And um, from that, we select a group of individuals who become the Premier Skills Coach Educators. And really, the, the role of a, a coach educator is pivotal to the success of the programme. Seeing these individuals train and aspire new coaches is the way that this programme works and really supports the development of the wider game locally. Um, it's delivered by Premier League coaches. Uh, we usually have three or four clubs represented for each, each course, which is a great very learning experience for everyone involved. But given how far we've come now with the programme over, over 11 years, we've actually utilised the coach educators that we've trained to co-deliver with the Premier League club coaches. So that really shows the sustainability of the programme and the full circle of it as well. Um, their role as trainers for this course is very much delivering a holistic programme. You know, how can we best engage young people by running fun and inclusive sessions, uh, promoting healthier lifestyles, developing personal skills as well. And that's really down to the trainers who can help um, deliver, deliver that training and learning. And it's, uh, it's over uh, pitch side uh, work, work in the classroom, very much teamwork, group work, presentations, building the confidence of these new trainers. Um, and through the success of that, we can see individuals who perhaps want to just be coaches or those who want to progress to the phase three and be coach educators. It doesn't matter, whoever's involved gets those newly trained skills. Um, so that's the coach education aspect. We do have a referee development course, which is led by former PGMO referees. So that's the um, PGMO of the um, UK body for elite referees. And that is very much focused at the grassroots, so trying to get more individuals in, into the referee and role. So uh, looking at the fundamentals of the game, understanding the laws of the game. And that complements the coach education course really well. Um, so I think Premier, Premier Skills globally, it's very much about building capacity of trainers, building those networks, coaches working with coaches, with referees, our role to work with the local partners, professional bodies, leagues, FAs, clubs, that these individuals can then perhaps move a pathway into, given the networks they've built over time. So that's, that's the global program. And uh, the program um, is obviously in partnership with the British Council, so I'll come to Medi next. In terms of um, locally in China, how does that work? Uh, who are some of the local partners? for the Premier Skills Program in China. Okay, um, thanks. As Kate has just introduced, uh, Premier Skills is a global partnership between the Premier League and the British Council to use football as a tool to engage with young people across the world. So the British Council works in China as a cultural and education section of the British Embassy in Beijing and the um, cultural and education section of the British Consulate Generals in Shanghai, Chongqing, and Guangzhou. We firstly introduced the Premier Skills Program in China in 2009. In 2015, as you know, um, China launched its own um, football reform plan, 
where, uh, which has created uh, the enabling environment for us to scale up the UK-China collaboration in the areas of football. And in 2016, um, together with the Premier League and the English Football Association and the Federation of University Sports China, which is our local Chinese partner, um, signed a memorandum of understanding during the UK-China high-level people-to-people dialogue um, to jointly establish a UK-China campus football coach training framework. And I think this framework, um, Premier League, is a, a Premier Skills, it's a key training program that um, offers um, the Chinese coaches, PE teachers in schools and universities, a clear progression pathway. And, and the Premier Skills is helping them to understand the skills and competency which they have attained. Um, in, 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 in the China context, um, up to, uh, since the program was launched in 2009, uh, we have trained up to 2,300 P teachers in schools and universities across the whole country in over 23 cities and reaching over 1.2 million young people in the country. Um, last month, we have, we have just announced the first batch of Chinese coach educators, as Kate introduced, um, the Chinese coach educators who will be able to play a very influential role um, to deliver cascading Premier Skills um, program to, to benefit even uh, more teachers and students in this country. Our objective is to, just by, by working with a very dedicated group of PE teachers in this country, uh, the Premier Skills program is helping create the, the, the country's own coach networks who will be able to, who are capable of delivering very high quality um, football training programs to students in the country. Great. Um, the Premier League is obviously consisting of 20 clubs, so from a club point of view, Angela, um, how can a club be involved in the program and ultimately what are some of the benefits that the, a club can get going on the other hand as well? Ni hao, hello. Um, every Premier League club has a, has a chance of getting involved and providing coaches for this wonderful program which has been adequately explained so far. And we at Stoke City are, are one of those clubs and I think one of the most important things for our coaches is that they get to continue their personal development but also they learn different cultural skills which when, if like Stoke, you come and work at a school, um, you're already one step ahead. But more importantly, the, the work that our coaches do to help build a foundation at the grass, grassroots level uh, for Chinese football is so important But because without training children at an early age in the correct way, then, then the skills will never develop. But again, you've got PE teachers, not just PE teachers that take part, primarily PE teachers, and they understand the confidence it can give to the children, the actual self-confidence and teamwork and social building is really important so it's great for every Premier League club to be involved to help improve the standards of the and work with them in the future. Um, I think it's always great to have a program but obviously you need someone to execute it so Kelvin very much at the sharp end of execution. Um, can you explain a bit more about what that's like on a day-to-day -day basis, what the courses entails what do you teach? And yeah, Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you for the question. <laughs> um, um, just to give a background, I'm a coach educator from Malaysia, and I went through the four phases, or rather the three phases. So I'm the byproduct. That's why I'm here. <laughs> um, it's, it's been a pleasure, really, truly a pleasure. As the saying goes, what you do today will determine your tomorrow. And I'm just excited with where the China um, intention or the goal is. So Premier Skill is a program that can help really to speed up the process or to, to expand the love for football. So for our program, it entails three phases. The first phase is very much introduction to community coaching, whereby we learn as coaches 
So I am not a full-time coach, right? I have my profession, but this program have given an opportunity for people like me to to combine my passion in football and my passion for the community to give back to the community. So the first phase actually helped me to understand the coaching methodology, whereby the first one is to create a conducive environment using smile, right? The safety, maximum participation. I, I know that elite coaches, we used to do drill, drill line, right? But in, in premier skill, we use fun activities to drive learning, to use football as a tool to even um, teach about geography, math, um, to teach about social skill as well. So maximum participation, I, is inclusion whereby we actually help the coaches to understand that we can actually invite those with special need to come alongside in the whole program itself. Um, L is definitely learning, whereby every individual will have different pace. And then finally, E is enjoyment and success. So that is some methodology that we use in order to really create a conducive environment for children and the other thing is to help coach educator or rather coaches to understand the steps. How do you increase the intensity or decrease the intensity based on different level of students? Let's face it, in, in community coaching or rather in, in school as well, it's difficult because there are different level of players, right? So in, through this phase one, it helps a coach like me to know when to use steps, the space, Right, the task giving better players um, different tasks to do. Right, using only left leg, using the weaker leg, and then the E is equipment, adding equipment on, or decreasing the equipment. P is using different set of people, and S is using different speed. So it gives a, a good tool for lay coaches like us, right, to to start a community program or to give PE teacher the tool to run an effective and fun program. Okay, that is phase one. When we enter the phase two, basically it's to filtering process. Those selected one will go to phase two. And in phase two, we are trained in community development. Um, how to start a community program, the organization part, the recruitment part. And in my case, in, in my country, we go into the extent of finding what would be the social issue within the community. And we will use football as a tool to attract people and at the same time to help with working with NGOs and working with people that have the same passion to solve the social issue as well. So that's phase two. Phase three, that is when the coaches are trained to be coach educator. So I'm one of the five coach educators from Malaysia. So now our role is to be trained as coach educator, meaning to say to run and to multiply basically the premier skill program. So that is the plan of sustaining the program itself and multiplying it within the country. Are you sure this is not your full-time job? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, you're right. But, but in Malaysia, because we started in 2009, so it has been nine years, and we have raised up about you know, more than 300 coaches. And they are all from all walks of life. And that's the beauty of this program. Um, we are not trying to compete with the FAs. Instead, we are working alongside with FAs because I truly believe that there is a side of premier school whereby we want to encourage more students, more kids to enjoy football. That's where we increase the grassroots base so that the elite teams or the elite academies can have more to choose from. So there will be a two-pronged um, strategy to that. Yeah. Great. Um, I think the program started in 2007 globally. Um, and I believe it, it might be a bit tailored for China. Kate, okay, can you tell us how that's tailored for China and why the Premier League has such a focus on China in terms of the program? Yeah, um, well, China is a key market. 250 million fans, I believe, half of which are Premier League fans. It's a country where the, where the, uh, the sport is developing and emerging. Um, and, you know, 
from our point of view, with the, with the uh, local government given the top priority and the top of the agenda to develop the game as part of the family, we're there to support that. Uh, we already have a long standing relationship with China already. Uh, we're from hosting pre season tours with the clubs, um, with our partnership with Chinese broadcasters, Premier Skills, as we've mentioned, you know, working at the grassroots level. Um, and also our elite level uh, collaboration with the Chinese Super League, we're doing a lot of work with them. So we already have those partnerships on the ground, but Premier League has a responsibility uh, to drive impact locally and to help develop the game and promote football as a force for good. Um, so from the grassroots angle, we're, we're working at all elements of the football ecosystem here. The, the grassroots element in terms of working with schools, popularizing the sport, developing young players, uh, you know, and energy and excitement around the game. That's very much focused on that angle. And from the other end of the spectrum, we're working really closely with the Chinese Super League. We have a mutual cooperation agreement uh, with them, which is around knowledge sharing. Um, so we have actually had a, a few UK study visits with their senior management, academy managers, to show them how we as a league have developed over the 25 years. You know, it's a, it's a constant learning process. How have we got there? You know, um, the elite player performance plan with our academies, you know, how has that been set up? What are the fundamental things for our, our clubs to work, you know, to develop that and work with ourselves? Um, so there's a, there's a huge, huge raft of knowledge and sharing that we can provide um, and also learn from the, from the Chinese Super League as well. So I think, yeah, it, yeah China is a big focus uh, for us. You know, we're, we're keen to support their area of development. And what do you, I mean, this might be a bit of an obvious question. What do you think the Premier League brings to the programme? Um, is it culture, is it expertise, is it technical? Mm. What, what ultimately do you think the Premier League brings to the programme? Um, well, the Premier League and the clubs, um, we, we, I think we bring a wealth of experience in delivering um, a variety of community programmes in the UK. Um, you know, our clubs are very, very experienced at that over the last 25 years. Um, and we, we, over the, uh, the programmes we fund are delivered by 92 of the, the Premier League and Championship clubs. So we've got a huge reach throughout the UK, and around I think 500,000 young people are, ta are targeted and participate in, in those programmes every year. So from that, um, you know, we have a variety of programmes that look at different topics, different focus areas um, from a community point of view. So from the education side, we work with primary and secondary schools, helping to run school tournaments, after school sports, um, working with teachers now to help uh, improve PE, PE sessions which incorporate other learning, English maths, um, and, um, you know, and also developing enterprise skills. Uh, that's, a, that's a big program with the Premier League. But we also have in inclusion programs as well, so, you know, working with, with girls and women, disability, uh, working with those who are vulnerable in society. Um, and I think, you know, everyone knows here that, that football is a hook. Um, you know, it, it, the, the Premier League brand, the club badge, is a great way to really inspire um, and yeah, and we are utilising that experience to take that overseas. And that's what Premier, that's what Premier Skills does. It exports all that level of practice that we have and deliver that overseas. And you know, we have uh, our club coaches, you know, from Stoke and the other 19 clubs that are involved in delivering programmes that are specifically designed around a particular focus that they might deliver on in the UK. And they can share that experience. We've actually had clubs co-create the curriculum, which is based on the programmes in the UK. But we also understand that you know, we adapt the curriculum as well. So you're, we're finding obviously Premier Skills has become very bespoke in different markets. You know, for China, we're working with teachers. Um, with, with India, we're working a lot with, with a lot with NGOs and the uh, local football leagues. So there's different um, you know focus areas on, 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 on what Premier Skills can give. Um, and you know, I think overall, I mean, there's a lot of mentorship that happens in the Premier League clubs. We're seeing participants who become mentors, who, be, you know, who become ultimately club staff, and they become the role models to the, uh, to the, the young people on those programs. And again, it's that power of that club badge, and, and that's something that's built into Premier Skills on a global scale in terms of the mentorship, coach education, how to be a good role model. And I think that's something that our clubs have developed and, you know, over the years, all have been a good role model, and that's something really powerful. And, and Great. Um, Mehdi, from a British Council side, um, obviously the programme, I believe, has been going in China since 2009. 
Um, what are the objectives, do you think, of the programs in China? And do you think those objectives have changed through time in the past sort of nine years? Okay, thank you. Um, the, the, the China's uh, football reform plan released in 2015 aims actually to um, build um, an integrated pipeline for football talent, ranging not only ranging from the grassroots level um, up to club and professional levels. Although the professional football creates uh, far more economic activities and press coverage, um, organizing and standardizing the instructions at the grassroots level has been seen as very critical to uh, build a proper feeder system for competitive teams and also um, leveraging football as a policy tool um, to raise the level of physical education in China, which has been emphasized quite a lot in the plan. Um, the current situation in China is that, in general, the clubs a lack of strong youth training system. And that weakness has been compounded by the lack of football in schools. Um, historically, in China, um, football in schools are very limited, with only a very minority of schools are doing football matches and leagues. And the schools also tend to focus more on winning the games instead of cultivating um, student interest. And the schools tend to also concentrate more on investing a small number of players rather than trying to build mass popularity. Well, to popularize the game is uh, one of the very key objectives of the China's football reform plan. And the Ministry of Ed Education actually have set very clear target and plan to increase both the quantity and quality of football coach, football coaches in schools and universities. They also set clear plan to increase the number of schools which offer specialized football programs. So I think it's in this context that's where the premier skills add great values um, about popularizing the game because Premier Skills, as Kate has introduced, and also, I think, um, also as Angela and Calvin mentioned, we, we build the capacity of the PE teachers and equip them with the right level of skills, um, mindset, teaching pedagogy, so they, when they are back to their schools, they are capable of delivering their own um, football coaching to students. They're capable of doing their own football projects in their schools and communities. They are able to create an environment in their schools where kids can be encouraged to participate in the game, um, to, to, to build their confidence, self-esteem, and to, to enjoy football. That's, that's the most key, because joy is the most key to success of football in China. So I think Premier skills can add great value to support the objectives and also address the gap and the needs here. Um, actually, I think a commitment to the sustainable approach to football at the grassroots level is close linked to the future success of the professional football in China. So um, Premier skills has now been recognized by the government as a very effective program to, to address the needs and support its objectives. Right. Um, from a club's point of view, someone like Stoke City, I believe you have a very long-standing partnership in Shanghai now. Angela, could you tell us a bit more about that, how that came about and how that's going at the moment? Yeah, um, obviously Stoke wanted to get involved in China to increase the global image. As, as any business knows that the amount of people here, 1.4 billion, it's a, it's a great exposure if you can get there. And, and we realized that we weren't here to make money. I know that we're not a charity, although we have a charitable arm. But we wanted to, to enhance what the Premier League were doing with Premier Skills because without the basis that they bring, the children can't get better. And we were lucky enough to form a partnership with the Western International School of Shanghai, which had brilliant facilities. But more importantly, they allowed us to bring in local children who any of you know Shanghai or most parts of China, some people will not see a football pitch, they'll not see a patch of grass, they'll not be able to, to play at all. So with the cooperation of the school who are forward thinking, we're able to bring local children in 
and give them the values and the ability to play the sport and more importantly to be as good as they can be. Not every player will get to be an international, not every player will play for their first team, their club, their local area. But if they can be as good as they can be and gain the values of strength, operation, personal connection and teamwork, we wanted to achieve. So we're very happy with what we do. We'd like to do it in far more places, and if anybody wants to, wants to speak to us afterwards, I'm sure the Premier League would like to get Premier skills in more places. But it's people like Stoke, the other Premier League clubs, the physical education teachers of schools who will actually improve the football in this country. You can host the World Cup, and more importantly, do well to be associated. Brilliant. Um, I believe on going the other way, you've hosted Chinese coaches at Stoke City. Is that right? Well, we've had a lot of coaches at Stoke City in, in one session, and we've, we've kept, thanks to the British Council, we've kept in touch with those coaches. They come over, some of them come to the school, so that there's an ongoing process. So they haven't just come and worked at Stoke City. They've come back, we've kept in touch with them. They can come and work at the school. They can learn from us and we give them more tools to continue. And as they get better, they help other coaches, which I'm sure you'll continue to say. Kelvin, coming back to you, yeah. um, I guess what, what are some of your favorite drills in, in the session? And also, if you can explain more, a bit more about some of the personal benefits of, of being you know, part of Premier Skills and of being a Premier Skill coach. So it's a loaded question, right? There's <laughs> one in drill and one is... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we shall just... Uh, Whichever you like right. to go for first. So, I guess in, in Premier School, we introduce a lot of fun games, right? And one of it is the gate system, whereby we encourage the children to, to dribble through the gates and as quick as possible, and to see who will go through as many gates as possible. And then we progress it with passing, and again, we create fun element using competition just to you know, use fun element to help them to increase the intensity. And there's a lot of excitement there. Kids are you know, just trying to beat each other. So I, I guess there are many. So that, that's just one of it. Yeah, that's just one of it. But in terms of personal... Personal benefits. What yeah, do you think you know, in terms of right. what a coach might gain? I guess for me being here, it just shows the commitment and the investment of British Council and Premier League, right, in, in terms of making sure the coach educators have the tools and have the exposure that they need to be effective back in their country. So I, I will summarize the two pieces, if you will allow me to. So the first one is platform. As many of you know, as the, I, I, in fact, this morning I've been, I spoke to Ian. We were talking about um, some of us like that. We want to do something back for the community. We want to you know, get our neighbors to come along and to play. But we just didn't know how to. We don't have the tools. We don't have the um, structure. So Premier School have allowed me, because I was one of the dad who really wanted to start something, but just didn't know how. So Premier School have given me the tools and the equipment to, to start that. And in fact, right now, I'm running a community program whereby we have about 30, 40 kids, and we have about 15, 20 dads that come along in that program. And we encourage that because one of my passion is to ignite potential within the children and also to bring back the family bond between the dads or family and the kids. And what better way to use football as a tool to do that? I mean, there's just one part of it, but the other part of it is the platform for me to be exposed in different arena, international arena. And I've got invited to go to India to join the Premier League um, coach educator to run similar program. But this time around, I'm not one of the participants, but I'm one of the coach educator. And it's just been an amazing opportunity, amazing experience for me to, to lead that session with, together with the Premier League coaches. Um, I also got invited to Singapore for the Asia Trophy Cup. And I'll tell you, is it okay if I just share a story? So I was, I was running 
um, the program itself in class, and then the whole Everton contingent came in. So Robert Elson um, came in together with the Everton contingent, and after the program, he came to me and he asked me, so would you be interested if you come over to Everton for a month? And I was like, is someone pinch me, please? <laughs> it's, it's just an amazing opportunity, and I actually got to travel to Everton for a month, um, it really has opened my eye in terms of how football can be used to impact the community. So Everton in a community has truly reached out to the community um, in terms of employability. They have programs for employability. They have programs for old age, Alzheimer, women at risk, um, mental health. So that blew my mind because in Malaysia, there's something very new using football as a tool to reach out to the community in certain areas such as that. So to me, I think it's just amazing opportunity that can use football to impact community. What more? 1.4 billion population. Imagine if all the PE teacher take the opportunity to reach out to the youth, not just in football skills, but reaching not just the head, but the heart as well, as well as the hands the impact will be immense, the impact will be immense. Um, other than Everton, of course, Soccer Rex, um, it's just another opportunity for me to share my story to perhaps inspire people like me, right, who want to do something with football, who want to do something with the passion of com combining my passion and my purpose together. And, they say that the meaning of life is to find your gift, right? And um, the purpose of life is to give it away. And I find it a joy to be in this fraternity, to be in this fellowship of you know, Premier League, British Council, and different various clubs as well. So it's been an immense joy. Great. Thank you. Great. Um, it's obviously great to hear about all the experiences each of you have had. But um, Kate, if I can ask you, what are the Premier League's ambitions for the program for the future and maybe even for China Bespoke? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, Kelvin, you know, you're the most enthusiastic person I know. You're inspiring to young people. I think, you know, it's individuals like you that we're working with around the world. Um, and it's important for us, as you say, to give those platforms and make sure these individuals that we're training continue their learning journey, whether, you know, whether that's organizations they go on to, move, to work with, associated with. And I think for us, you know, we are in China specifically now, we are about to we've just embarked on the phase three level. So by the end of this year, we'll have more coach educators trained as part, as part of the teacher network. And it's important for us for the next three years is to think, OK, we have we have a net, network of coach educators in each of these 29 countries. We obviously continue that work, but we've got to look at the next level now. You know, how can we add more value to these individuals that we've trained? How can they cascade their skills better? We're working very closely with Street Football World and their ne network of NGOs. How can, you know, basically this human resource that can deliver these kind of programs help other community programs, other school initiatives? So our next move is really to see how we can create more partnerships to help build that ne network of individuals will be the next stage. Mary, would you say the ambitions are the same for the British Council in China? Yeah, I think the same. Um, fully agree with what Kate mentioned. Um, well, we're very committed in continuing working closely with Premier League and also our Chinese national partner, the Federation of University Sports China, to, to benefit more teachers and also students um, at the grassroots level. Um, I think that um, we, we, I, I've, I've attended several sessions this morning and afternoon um, at a conference. I think one of the key messages mentioned by many uh, speakers and also audience is about what will help China to win the World Cup in the 20 to 30 years time or even longer? I think one key message mentioned by many of them is a number of kids who are going to play football from now on and also the joy, you know, they, 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 how, 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 how they enjoy football as a game. So I think who, who, who decides, who decides to, to invest in football? for their kids. I'm, a, I'm, I'm the parent. My son is seven years old. 
my son has lots of pressure in study. As you know, in China, every children, every child has lots of pressure. And we have lots of choices to invest in kids, whether to invest their time to learn mathematics, to learn English, or, or to play football. So what do you think will inform my decision as a, as a parent to encourage my son to learn football? I think the quality of the coaching, the quality of his coach, you know, I encouraged his coach to join Premier Skills, and she did. So it's, a, it's about how the coach will guide through my kids when there is conflict in the game, how the coach will build my son's confidence about team working, you know. It's about the tributes. And if my son come back to tell me, hey, fun, the football is very boring, yeah, that will influ influence my decision. I might give up. But if my kid come back to tell me, he enjoys football, I think I, I'm very willing to and committed to invest further just to encourage him to continue the journey with football. I think that's very key about, and also the value of this program in terms of building the capacity of teachers who are then able to influence the kids. Great. And also looking forward to the future from a club's perspective, Angela, um, I know we already know that you have a well-established program in Shanghai. Are you looking to expand that? Yeah, I think everybody, but more importantly, uh, because everybody in this room can take the time to invest in the future of Chinese football, not just football, football here, and the crew, and you'll be paid back far more than you put in. Thanks. I hope this microphone's British and it'll work. Um, what I was saying is that you need to invest heavily in, in what you do because you get out of anything what you put in. And the Premier League at this moment in time is the best brand in the world. And if you can work alongside the Premier League, we're very lucky too. We're also lucky to have a great partner in our school. And I noticed that there are football clubs here like the, the Chanteau team, the Future Lions, who are trying to help with coaching for children. And all I can do is say that if you invest at the grassroots level and you give quality coaching and you have people as enthusiastic as these people here today, then you're onto a winner. Without that, we might as well all pack up and go home today because if you're just here to make money, um, you will not succeed in China. And I think the Chinese have given us the opportunity to come to this country and help make this sport great. And it's incumbent on us to do so. Thank you. Great. Kelvin, I think we've all seen your passion for the program. Uh, looking forward for you, um, what are your ambitions, you know, not only for yourself in the program, but in terms of you know, those around you in Malaysia? How do you see the future? Um, it's interesting because out of the five coach educators in Malaysia, one of them is already now in the FAM, in the FAs, and he's the grassroots manager. Right? And the other one who have started um, a football academy and a football agency. So it's, it's interesting to see where the journey um, leads you as a coach educator. For me, I'm going to continue to use it as a platform to, to ignite potential, to ignite heroes within families. Because I, I do run like football leadership program, so I combine football and leadership together. And it's just amazing to see how we can use football to really impact the community. And at the same time, we are trying to encourage women, we are trying to encourage um, social inclusion. Just recently, I just got an email from one of the participants. She's a mother, and she teaches special needs children. So she wrote to me and she said, you know, it's just amazing, Premier Skill now has given her the confidence to use football to reach out to the students the special needs students um, to form a team, a football team. So with that, I think I'm going to just continue to use football as a tool, as an instrument to inspire people to ignite potential within them. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Great. Um, conscious of the time, so I think um, I'll throw a last question to you. I think maybe this is relevant for both Kate and Mehdi. Um, 
from a practical side, if you want to get involved in Premier Skills, um, how does someone get involved as a partner or as, as an individual coach, basically? Um, yeah, well, obviously, we, we work with the British Council. We have a, a great network in each of the countries we work with, um, with uh, education institutions, NGOs, um, schools. So um, we will reach out to different uh, multi-partnerships and see you know, who we can recruit as parts of the programme. Obviously, globally, we're looking at individuals who have, who have that reach in their communities, like we say, who want to become coach educators. So, as I say, we're, we're, we're looking at the development of the program. I think there's probably be a, be a strong emphasis on teachers globally moving forward. We've got the Primary Stars program in the UK that some of you might be aware of. We're working in 14,000 schools um, where co club coaches go into the schools on, and training PE teachers on the delivery. And there's an online resource now that teachers can download uh, worksheets um, and information for to develop in their sessions. So what we might do there is actually export that model overseas as part of the Premier Skills family. So I think if, yeah, te teaching might be the way forward with us in terms of development, but if there's anyone here from, from an NGO football organization that is keen to hear more about this, would obviously like to see how we'd like to link our network of coach educators with you and see how they can roll out the program within your programs and help add that a value to what you're already doing. So please feel uh, free to speak to us after this session. Great, thank you. Um, I think that just about neatly brings um, nearly to the end. Any questions from the floor? No? Okay. Great. Uh, thank you to the panellists for participating. Very insightful and thank you all for coming. Thank you very much.